Over the next several episodes of the Four Paws podcast, we will be interviewing various staff members of the Guide Dog Foundation and America's Vet Dogs to learn more about what a day in the life of their work on and on, camp- on and off campus looks like. Through sharing these interviews, we hope to shed a light on the journey a dog takes through our program and the variety of people involved in their training. On today's episode, we will be joined by Mary and Kristen, who will share about their day in the life as nursery staff. Thank you so much for joining us today and for taking the time to share about your role at GDF and AVD. Before we dive deep into all things day in the life, would you mind sharing a bit about your background and how you ended up in your job? Mary, how about you go first? Okay, well, the way I ended up in in my job was um, we had started out um, raising two puppies and um, the second puppy that we raised made it as a breeder. And um, we decided, uh, my family and I decided to do a home whelp. And um, I was kind of hooked after that. So um, we did several whelps at at home after that. And um, I ended up working in the nursery. That's wonderful. How about you, Kristen? Um, I started, I I live in Smithtown, so I've seen trainers around with the dogs. And I, of course, like many people, love dogs. So I applied to work in um, canine care, which is in the training center or puppy transition building. And I started working just one day a week. And then um, I started to find out more information about working in the nursery. And now I'm here at the nursery. That's so great. And the puppies in the nursery, about how old are they on average? Okay, the puppies we get um, from birth, we we get the the moms in here when they're pregnant, about a week before they're due. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're born here in the nursery, or some people do have them at their homes, at home whelps. Um, But in the nursery, they're born and they stay with us until they're six weeks, three days. And then Mm -hmm. they move into the puppy transition center. Wonderful. Uh, You guys kind of mentioned this. Do Do either of you have any dogs at home? Okay, um, I have three retired breeders at home, and my son has um, an active breeder at home. And so we have we have four dogs: two a yellow lab, a black lab, and two golden retrievers. And I have um, Jay, who he just retired from the foundation. He's a male breeder, and he had about sixty something puppies here before he retired. This he retired this last July at nine years old. Wow, that's incredible and and just amazing, all the dogs you guys have taken care of. Um, We really couldn't do what we do without the the breeder dogs. They they start the whole process. Uh, What type or what time of does the average day start for you guys in the morning and what building do you mainly work in? Obviously, the nursery. Uh, What what building is that in on campus? It's it's, um, I guess the breeding and development center. And um, we we get in at 7 a.m. We start our day. And um, when we, we walk in, they know it's time to eat. As soon as we walk in, everyone, the moms, the moms, sometimes the puppies as they get older, but the moms start barking and they, the lights come on and they know, they know it's feed time. Yeah, so we have, we have a very busy morning routine. Um, we get all the moms fed and then all the puppies fed, everybody let out. And then uh, we clean. We clean the whole nursery top to bottom. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that takes us what? Usually till about ten o'clock. Yeah. Till about ten o'clock. Yeah. Between two and three hours, depending how many moms and babies we have. Yeah. Yeah, you answered my next question without me even asking it. I was going to ask what a typical morning looks like. And so obviously you guys usually stay on campus because puppies that young are not vaccinated and ready to go out into the world. Um, So we will not ask you that question, but do you work on any specific activities or socialization or handling with the puppies when they're that young or with the moms? Yeah, absolutely. Um, The puppies, we start um, neurological stimulation at three days old. Um, We handle the pups and um, we, you know, just make sure we touch their paws and and, um, just tilt them side to side. Yeah, so we just do like have a whole little routine of of stimulation for for the very young puppies. And um, we do that for about 10 days. 
Mm -hmm. And then after that, we usually try to go in every run every day and, and definitely touch them and hold them and let them feel, you know, people touching them every day. So they get used to that. And then we also have um, different toys, um, different surfaces that they can get used to. We like the puppies to walk on different surfaces. We put them on, um, you know, a scale every day. They get um, on a table every day. A slide. But yeah, we have, we have slides, slides activity boxes. So um, we do have um, people that come into the nursery, volunteers, um, for bridging, we call it. So it's, um, it's, it's their, basically they're um, socializing the puppies. Although now due to COVID, we are on a pause for our bridging pro program. So me and Kristen have been trying to do most of the socialization ourselves. So we do, sometimes we set up, um, puppies in the middle of the nursery and we set up all sorts of toys and activities and let them play and we try and, and handle them and um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, we just basically hold them, touch their paws, their toes, their ears, let them get used to being touched all over their body and um, kind of make noises so they get used to sounds and not be nervous. And, I think that's and we it. just watch and let them play also and you know with each other. They do get a lot of playtime in here. We try and encourage playtime. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of toys and uh, activities to do. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of exploring and adventuring and naps at that age, I assume. Yes. Yep. Definitely. About an hour and a half a week and then an hour and a half nap. That's what I usually say. <laughs> yeah. So, and the, and we do like the moms, they get, um, we get them mm -hmm. comms and we take them outside in the nice weather. We'll take them outside in the yard and walk them around a little bit so they don't get too bored. Um, we try and let them in with the pups as much as they can. Some of the moms like to um, be in there all the time and play with the pups. And, but as, as the puppies get older, mm -hmm. the moms tend to spend a little less time with them. They, they have their own way of um, weaning. From, from the pups. And so that's when we, we try and uh, stimulate the moms a little bit more and give them things to do. That's very interesting. And so mom is typically with you for a little bit before birth and then until the puppies leave at six weeks then? Um, mom stays, yeah, she comes in um, about a week before birth and she stays with us until approximately five and a half weeks. Okay. Um, her job is done and uh, she's ready to go home and the pups, uh, they're all weaned onto food at that point and everybody is uh, pretty good. So that last week then they, they, um, they get their vaccines. So we keep them in here. They'll get the vet comes in to check them. They get vaccinated, they get microchipped, they get tattooed. Um, we have our wonderful photographer, Rebecca, who comes in and does their puppy portraits. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much all after mom goes home. Yeah. Okay. And you, you mentioned when we first got on the call, you currently have about 45 puppies in, in the nursery. On average, about how many puppies and moms do you have? I, obviously, it changes depending on the seasons of, of moms, but how many do you have, per se, in the kennel at a time? Um, we're pretty full right now, but um, we could have anywhere between up to seven litters at a time at, in here at a time. And then we also do have, I'm trying to think right now, we have three litters out that are home whelps. So, oh. um, so we also keep up with their, with what's going on with the puppies at people's homes. And we do a uh, check up on them once a week and we bring anything that they may need, whether it's uh, food or um, treatments, any treatments, kind of treatments. Yeah, I can think of the word, penazrol, pyrophilia. Yeah, so we, we do take care of them also. So, I mean, on an average, I guess uh, that's, that's kind of a tricky question, but um, <laughs> it varies. Yeah, it really yeah. does it, vary. Not that often that we're always seven. Seven's our capacity, and it's not that often, right? Yeah, I would four, say five. usually between 20 and 30 puppies in here at yeah. a time, and an average. Yeah, so, but that's still mm -hmm. a nice amount. Oh, absolutely. I didn't realize you guys also visited the puppies off campus and helped with those. That's that's great that you're still supporting the home whelps and that, that people are, the volunteers are able to to do that and we can still get puppies born and then start their journeys even if we're full on campus. 
Um, yeah. Is there, do you have any specific fond memories or favorite memories you like to share about a special day working in the nursery? <laughs> well, um, my favorite part of working in the nursery is doing the whelps. I, I love um, the, the moms when the puppies are first born and just seeing them just take their first breaths and watching the moms the way they take care of them. And I just find it all so amazing. That's my favorite part. And so, I mean, I've seen it hundreds of times, so I guess I can't have a favorite part, <laughs> but um, it's my favorite part over and over. Oh. My favorite part is when at two weeks, they usually start opening their eyes. And I feel like it's almost like, I don't know if you're a parent or ever had children, but when they first open their eyes and they're looking at you and they're so innocent and so tiny and Usually also at that time at two weeks, they start going up on all four legs and they kind of waddle and it's just so cute to watch because, and then once they hit three weeks, that's when they start on puppy food that, that we really soak and saturate and make it really soft, kind of like an oatmeal. But that's when they start, their personalities start coming out and they're just so cute to watch them change daily. I mean, every day we come into work and who's walking, whose eyes open, who's eating, it's, it's just exciting to see and some grow faster than others and some are really big and fluffy and thick like polar bears. We had a litter in recently of two yellow labs. That were, it was a small litter of two and two yellow labs were born and they were so fluffy and white. I just kept calling them my polar bears. They were really cute. <laughs> it's, it truly is amazing to see a puppy from birth to five and a half weeks, the changes, yes. the development and the changes. When they come in, they like when they're born, they're just about a pound. They don't see, they don't hear. Um, and then when they leave at five and a half weeks, they're like puppies. <laughs> they're just like the puppies that you expect yep. them to be. Barking so, and six and a half and weeks, jumping. I'm sorry. Yep. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. just incredible. And I can't even imagine, I know, I struggle to imagine how my, my 70 some pound dog was once a tiny little puppy and how <laughs> she grew into what she is today. It's just so incredible the journey they go on and how they they all start the same and then end up in such different places in their in their lives um yeah is, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners any any last words any any specific things you'd like to to share with us covered so much I of know, what we like do. and what we do it's like it's yeah, we all all we can say is we we really really both love coming to work every day, and um, when I like, come in and have a bad day, Mary will hold up a puppy and be like, "This is not gonna make your day happier, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and it always does. It always does. <laughs> so um, uh -huh. yes, we both love coming to work every day, and um, like I said, we really love watching the um, the changes in the puppies, like yeah. the just the whole development the process from beginning to yeah and sometimes we do hold them up and look at them and you're like wow you're somebody's eyes one day or you know you're going to help somebody in life and it's amazing to look at the little tiny you know one two three pounder that they are and it's amazing what they're going to become and do for people so i, th I think that's yeah i think that's everything oh, um but yeah but it's just absolutely incredible Thank you so much for, for taking the time and for sharing with us. And I'm sure our listeners are going to very much enjoy this. And um, I'm sure the, the puppies are going to love for you to get back to them and, and the moms as well. Um, and that'll be it for this. The, oh, sorry. I was going to say the puppies really cooperated while we were recording and they, they all took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. That's, that's great. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thanks. thank you. And um, we will send you some uh, video clips. Oh, yes, puppies. that'll be great. Here. That will be it for today's episode of the Four Paws podcast. Thank you for joining us. Please feel free to follow along for future months where we will continue to follow a dog's journey throughout our program from puppyhood to placement. Future episodes can continue to be found on Podbean and other streaming services. If you'd like more information, you can check out our websites, www.guidedog.org and www.vetdogs.org. If you are a graduate or potential applicant, reach out to our graduate support or admissions teams at 
930-9055 or consumer services at guidedog.org and we will be more than happy to provide assistance. Thank you.